Welcome to the wild. Welcome to Taz Wild. And uh, today we're going to review episode number seven, the maggot episode. We're going to get to that, but first we're going to start from the beginning. Uh, well, actually, before we really start the, the review and the recap, I want to just share with you guys some of my setup that I had there. I have this setup here that I would fish with. There's some fur of some creature. And this was a very good lure. This was connected to this here, like that. So this would trail behind. And I made this one here. Looks funky, but really works. And those two hooks just to increase the chance of getting um, a pike or lake trout. Uh, I also have some, some jaws of some of the fish that I ate there. You can see this is a trout jaw, a jaw of a trout. It's a nice size trout too. And uh, I have uh, jaws of, uh, of a pike. Right. Uh, actually like that. Like this. Like this. Pretty sharp teeth. This was a big pike actually. Very cool. And lastly, you know, I have uh, this box that I turn into a chessboard, but also it was a box that I carried a lot of sand and rocks to make my, um, my fireplace inside of my shelter. This was very helpful. This is a trap box uh, in which you'd put a one, one to any, 120, um, um, 120 uh, trap, body grip trap here. And when the animal would get to get, go inside to get the bait, you'd trap it. So I found this box attached to a tree, probably like six, I don't know how old this, this is, I don't know, between like 40 and 60 years old, maybe. I don't know, actually, but it's very old. It's not a lot of people traps there anymore. Um, so there is like some screws that I used for the thing, some nails, but the box itself was great. It was great to, to sit, it was great to, um, to eat on top of it. It was great to carry stuff, to carry sand. I would patch this hole with moss and carry sand inside to up, you know, from the shore to my shelter. This was really, really, really helpful. And, you know, I, I carved a chess board here. I was going to paint with charcoal, but then I realized that I just had to take out the, the, the white paint from the squares that would be the black squares. And um, yeah, it was super fun. It's nice to have that there. And I create the pieces. Um, let's see. This was the, the queen. And I use black spruce patch melted and I painted here to make sure that this was like the black pieces uh, and there was the white pieces they don't have any in um in a pitch you know so this was the the uh the chest set and this was um I got a bark from a tree from um pepper birch and I folded it in half this was actually originally I would carry my berries I filled those up with berries I got a lot of berries and I brought to my shelter so I would like snack on it throughout the day when I was eating meat, just to have some like carbohydrate and also fibers uh, with my, my food. So I filled this up and then brought it back to my shelter. I also used this to put the fire and my improvised smoke that caught on fire. I used this to get water and throw to, to put the fire out. Um, my concern was really the forest. Um, I didn't want the forest to get burned because that was like a tinder box, that whole forest. So I would not have been, I wouldn't want to be responsible to burn a whole island. Um, and my fish was on the smoker, but did the fish burn? Maybe yes, maybe no. All right. Um, so let's do the recap for the episode number, number seven. Um, so the episode starts with um, 
with Alan uh, catching a duck in his gill net. And, you know, it, it goes to show the ethical part of this show. You know, we are trained by the, um, the local fish and game regulation uh, officers. And we learn about the animals, we learn about uh, what's legal to catch, what's illegal to catch, and when, um, which mode of catching that animal or killing that animal, it's legal or illegal. And it's all to make sure we are, um, we, you know, we're putting like a fair chase in this endeavor. And um, Alan displayed uh, that twice. One was with the Martin that ca got caught in, the, in his snare. Um, he was, he set up a bunch of snares, but really there was no rabbits actually for anyone in that, in that region. Um, so he got a Martin stuck on his snares and, you know, he got it loose. It was, I think around day, day 10 or something like that. Pretty, pretty early on. The second time we saw that, um, sportsmanship displayed was when Alan also released um, released the Narraganza duck. I saw the duck all the time around. Uh, they're really uh, spooky. Really, um, I took a couple shots on them actually, but I could not get any of them. Um, they were swimming very early close to my bay, and um, I took a couple shots. I was shooting a lot of uh, grouse and squirrel up in the trees, so it was really good in this angle. And then when I switched to shooting. Uh, on, the hor on the horizon and on the ground, I had to kind of like recalibrate a little bit. I had to get a couple of shots to be able to like recalibrate. So, <clears throat> good, good on Alan. He did a, a fantastic job and and he released it. And then automatically a lot of people watching is like, oh, now you can shoot it. But that's not, you know, uh, there's a thing called fair chase, right? That's like, you cannot just like stop your car and start hunting right there just because the animals the animal is there right um you have to be uh inside of the environment you have to you cannot use like tools motorized tools or the kind of means that just decrease increase your advantage to a degree that just doesn't sound right right it doesn't feel right um so he did a great job on that great job on that the thing about Alan was when he he went to a new fishing spot because his area was really choppy, right? It's funny because he mentioned and I recognize that like it's not windy, but the water is really like moving, and that's very interesting because exactly like sometimes it was not windy, but because it's a big lake, it has you know that power you know it creates waves in which bounce back on the shores. So he goes to find a different fishing spot uh, and he, he come across some moose tracks, fresh moose tracks, and which is like, it's huge. You like, you feel all pumped up, right? Like, oh my God, they are here. And he said that. Uh, so, but he continues uh, and, and goes to his fishing spot. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he get a fish, he get a trout there and he gets some bites and um so it's really promising really promising of course he has to fish fix his uh, gill net as well so he go back to his camp and is fixing a gill net maybe next day or something like that and um there's a big hole and he's trying to figure out how to fix that and he does a good job on that and that's really 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 promising because he found a new fishing spot he found a spot that just feels better for the gill net um i haven't seen him catching a fish on the gill net yet i might be mistaken but i have not seen that oh but now let's jump to uh to wyatt right some days when you're out there for a certain amount of time i really resonate resonate with uh what um wyatt said some days you wake up and you're like to this different day there's something different here. You don't know exactly to what direction. Generally, you feel positive. You feel that something is right. Something is right. Today is a different kind of day. And 
that happens happen you know happens when you're in the woods and when when you were like that happens when you're in the wood and connecting with nature there's some unexplicable feeling it's the feeling that you like you are with it right with it you're with the environment you feel connected sure enough he casts and he he get a trout he get a beautiful trout then he casts again and he loses his war So at that point, he's like, yeah, there's something different. I don't know what it is. There's something really different here. But, you know, he changed a little bit strategy and he goes in the woods and he get a, he get a grouse and then he get a squirrel. Then he comes back to check, to check his um, gill net and he has a white fish in his gill net. So it's golden, right? For, for, for why? It's beautiful. And some days you feel like that. You feel that there's something different. And it's beautiful when you ride that wave because then nature will really provide for you. One thing that White also reveals is a wound that he has in, he has in his, his arm and that he is hiding from production because he don't want to be pulled out. And he had a little bit of an accident and wood just got inside of his skin, inside of his arm. And he's healing it, but actually some liquid is coming out of it. Um, and eventually you see in, in the future footage, um, future tease, that he's pulling something out of it. In which it's kind of a good sign. You know, if you, when you take those things out, whatever is inside, that will heal. And one thing that I used there a lot was um, black spruce resin. When I had a cut or anything, I would put on it, right? I would get the fresh resin from the tree and it would put on my, on my cut. In like two, three days, it was completely healed. It was really, 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 really good. I was really impressed. impressed. Um, but then we're going to go, we're going to jump into um, my experience. So my shelter, it looks pretty good, you know. Uh, it's a very nice, compact shelter, but with some room inside um, and they, they showed me uh, finishing uh, creating a door for it in which was perfect it worked very well they show me talking about my mother and the points of my mother in my life in which was very cool um, that day was my mother's birthday I actually created a whole scene uh, singing her birthday to her um, I had a piece of cake was actually like a big mushroom like brown i was pretending it was like a chocolate cake and i put a, a piece of paper birch and i start i lighted and it was like a candle and um, it was pretty emotional for me that day because you know when you start recognizing you know that parts of you is where is it coming from right and when you're there with that amount of time and that experience you start connecting more to like who you are to where you're coming from. So those revelations, those discoveries, those affirmation, you know, really makes you uh, more emotional, you know, and connected to yourself. And that was, they did a good job on the edit. One thing that the edit didn't share with you was that after I finished the chair, I finished my door, I had finished my shelter and all my projects were all done. I was ready to get into the winter mode, right? I was ready to get into winter mode. Shelter done, I have a, cha a chair outside to sit, to enjoy some moments. And I was ready, right? Get into winter mode. And I said, now I'm gonna celebrate, right? So I set up all the cameras, all the cameras. I turned like all, I had uh, four cameras. So I turned all four cameras on different angles. I got firewood, I set up the spot I was going to cook because I was saying I'm going to eat a whole grouse. Because normally a grouse I would eat in like two, three days. Um, two days, but like three when, with the organs and everything. This, that day I, I, I said I'm going to eat the whole grouse. So I set up everything, I go up my food cache, I get, I go, I, you know, I get the grouse and I notice that there's a lot of maggots, mostly on the grouse but they were crawling all over too, all over the, the fish. That wasn't like so demoralizing, right? 
I didn't I don't really care about like eating rubs or whatever. If I cook them well, if they're alive and clean, it's fine. It just after working the whole day so hard and after just you know battling to get fish, battling to get, you know, food, then you're gonna eat leftovers of maggots. Like it's just this idea, you know, the hierarchy, you know, of like the the the, the what do you call it? like the hierarchy, you know, of the food chain, right? Hierarchy, you're like <laughs> below maggots, you know, it's just fucked up. It's so fucked up, so fucked up. Oh man, that's psychologically it's just like, man, this fucked up. It just makes you pissed off, you know, it just makes you like Man, this sucks. But, you know, I stopped. I just, you know, I decided just to be open with the camera and really just say, you know, just like, man, this fucked up, you know, fuck. So, I, I decided to stay. I didn't want to leave, right? It's like, you know what? It's fine. Just boil this thing, eat it, and it's fine. So, that night, you know, I was cooking. I cooked two grouse, so that was really the only thing, the only different thing that happened. The fish were all good, cleaned it up, I was hanging them to dry, and instead of eating one grouse, I had to eat two grouse. So that was the downside. Uh, I didn't lose any meat, uh, I didn't cut any part of the meat, I just took off the the, the, the maggots and washed it out, wash a little bit on, on the lake, and then put it in the pot, you know, uh, cooked and ate it and then just tastes like completely fine didn't taste bad at all it was completely fine it's just the concept the idea is horrible right moving fucking maggots so but I had to let the fish hanging to dry to make sure they were nice and healthy the food was really well smoked I grew up smoking food you know, as a as a teenager and growing up, and here on the, on the homestead, we raised pigs, and we do like a lot of different curing and smoking and shakuri and shakuri. And I'm very familiar with cold smoke, hot hot smoke, and all that. And I, you know, sometimes you know, I was so smoked my food that I was afraid it was too smoked. <laughs> because if it's too smoked, then you have too much smoke on your food. You your intestine cannot digest because of smoke you know, won't let you, your stomach, like, digest properly. But it's better to be over-smoked than under-smoked. So I really, really smoked my meat a lot. But during the storm, there was a lot of rain. And if you don't, if you remember last episode, I caught two grouse. So instead of, like, smoking that and preserving, and it was kind of cold still, so I, I cleaned it up and I ate the fresh grouse and let the smoked one up there. It was a mistake for me not to check every single day, maybe twice a day, to check my meat, right? I should make sure that everything was healthy. So I left like two days without checking them, because I thought everything would be fine. But we had some rain, and then the meat got wet, and got like, and then we had a warm day, and then the, the eggs from the fly hatched, and then the maggots start growing in the meat, right? So that was a mistake, but it's really hard to like remember and keep track of everything while you still finishing your shelter and, tr and hunting. I was hiking a lot, so a lot of times I was way far away from my shelter, and um, I'd come back home, make some food, and just kind of you know and sleep, and wake up next day do the same thing. So, but that was you know that was kind of there was a mistake not to check things every day. Um, just to make sure things was healthy. And then after I ate the maggot, <laughs> grouse, the infested maggot, then the, the grouse infested with maggot, I hanged my fish in front of my shelter. Technically, I was not allowed to hang my meat outside of my shelter or bring inside of the shelter. That's not allowed. You're not allowed to bring your meat inside of the shelter. If you remember all the seasons uh, where people would smoke their food inside of the shelter, like Jordan did, for example, he smoked the moose inside of his shelter. After those seasons, the production start like creating new rules of like you cannot 
bring your food inside of your shelter. You cannot eat inside of your shelter even. Um, I think it's not to attract rodents or things that will destroy the equipment. That's my guess, right? Or not to attract bear where you're sleeping or not to have guts all over the, the, the equipment. No, and I don't know. I think that would be, would be my guess. Um, but you're not allowed. So the closest I could bring the meat without getting trouble was hanging in front of my shelter. And in the morning when I wake up, the, 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 this, you know, the, the halves of the fish is on the ground, then one half is missing. And that sucked. At that point, you know, you, you just have to laugh because... This is just ridiculous, right? You eat and really leftover of maggot during the night in the morning, someone came and got your half of a trout. I was like laughing outward, but inside I was like so pissed. So ready to get that grouse. Uh, no, so ready to get <laughs> that Martin. And I started calling him Martin because he was pretty smart. Um, so, you know, that's where the episode left me off there in that situation. And um, then we go to uh, Melanie. Melanie started um, uh, going back to the blueberry patch. One thing that she mentioned that was, that makes a lot of sense. She was feeling that her body was not, uh, she was not keeping up with feeding and nurturing her body uh, to be, at a functional level. So she goes, tries to go to the blueberry patch, she comes back, she takes care of her body, she rests, and then she goes back to the blueberry patch and she pushes forward, she makes it. She discovers a new limit for herself and she harvests a lot of berries and come back home. That was beautiful, right? Smart and full of like passion and perseverance and she was rewarded with that. Um, yeah, then we go to, uh, Mikey, um, Mikey also shared with us those beautiful moments, uh, the moment in which you sit in the woods, there's no rush, you just sit and be in there and you feel so connected to everything, you can hear everything, right? You're not rushing into, into things. And then, eventually an opportunity comes to you and you're there and you're ready to take that opportunity. And that's what he did. He got a shot at a, um, at a squirrel and it was a perfect shot. And you can feel on him that it's like he's like energized. Not because he's eating the squirrel, but they believe in himself through that connection with the land, the alignment that he feels with the land fills him. Then of course he eats the, 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 the squirrel and that is also a nourishment. But I think the biggest nourishment right there was the connection with the land, the alignment of him with the land. And that takes you even further than just the squirrel, right? And I think that's where we kind of end the, the episode. Actually, we end with Alan in his new fishing spot. He's fishing. He's feeling some bites. It's at the end of the day. Yes, it's at the end of the day. And you know what happens? A huge pike, Mr. Rooster, comes all the way to the shore, all the way to the edge. And guess what happened? The pikes inhale. Exactly. The pike inhale his lure and he yunks it very, very strong <laughs> and ended up that the sharp teeth of the pike breaks his line. Uh, and he, you can see how excited he is because it was a monster pike. Exactly. A monster pike. Well said, rooster. It's a monster pike. He's, he's feeling a mix of like, damn it, I lost my baby what do you call it? baby lore or something like that his 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 lore but he's like damn it i should be pissed because i lost my lore <laughs> guess what it's okay because the most important thing is 
I know the fish is here. I know the fish is biting. It's a matter of time and persistence. And he caught his father, which was very beautiful. And the quote was, look at it, study it, and fig figure it out. Look at it, study it, and figure it out. It was beautiful the way it ended. And just after it ended, it goes back to a little preview of what's coming next. It shows me getting my bow and arrow and my axe and running towards something I'm calling a martin. And that is wild. It shows me in a canoe. It shows Wyatt uh, grabbing a fish. And it's just like show uh, male covering her face and sort of crying. And, and, and show um, uh, Alan say, oh, it might be a mistake. It's just a whole rendezvous of things happening. And we'll see what's going to happen next episode. Um, but I need to share that this last episode, episode seven, was really, really hard for me, really touching, but also really hard, really hard. It was a mix of excitement of being ready for the winter and having a big blow with the maggots, you know. Not nutritionally, because I just ate it, but it was the first time that it, like, it hit me, like, you know, in a more emotional level. It sucked. But we're hanging in there. We keep going. We keep rolling. And I'll see you in the next episode recap. Episode number eight. See you next time. Hey, make sure you subscribe. Subscribe is somewhere around here or something. And like the video. Share with your friends. I'm just starting this whole thing. I do not know what I'm doing. But if you subscribe, I'll keep posting more content. See you around. Alright, see you next time.